Hey guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool looking site embedded house in Revit. Now this is quite a cool way to insulate your house from the sun and make it a lot cooler and it all also looks quite amazing to have your kind of your house a part of a site plan. Okay, but before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make videos like this every day. Okay, so let's get started. Here I am in Revit and I'm just going to be using the architectural template. And as always, first I'm just going to set the units to meters and give it two decimal places. Go OK. And now immediately we're going to jump to massing in sight and create this as an in place mass. So once we're here, we need to add some reference planes. So first I'm going to create one reference plane over here and name it reference plane number one. And then I'm going to create another reference plane, just type in RP for a shortcut. And for the offset, I'm going to give it 15 meters and I'm going to create another one. And actually I'm going to create another four. So we have a total of five reference planes. So this, this one's number number one. This one will be number two, this one will be number three, this is number four, this one's number five. Yeah, you guessed it. Okay, so now let's go into South Elevation and here I'm just going to add some lines to help me out. So I'm just going to go to Model Lines and for the plane I'm going to pick it by name and choose plane number one. And I'm just going to pick one perhaps over here, one over here, and then Let's add a couple of more. Okay, so once I have these lines over here, these are just going to help me to dimension the size of my site plan. So here I'm just going to go to model lines, make sure that draw on work plane is set, make sure that 3D snapping is off, make sure you're using the spline, and here I'm just going to pick reference plane number one. And I'm going to draw this just a, as a straight line with a bunch of these kind of a spline points. Then I'm going to go here and create another one and I'm going to set the reference plane to number two. Start from over here, do one point on the ground and then I'm going to lift off a bit. And I'm going to just model it like so and finish it over here. And this looks maybe a bit too hard, so I'm just going to drop it down a bit, perhaps like this. Yeah, okay, so it already looks like a small hill. Now go again, model line, spline, reference plane number three, and now we're going to do the largest one. So this should go to something that could theoretically be a roof of a house. And then you just finish it off here, like so. And again, I think I'm going to bring it down just a tad because it's maybe too big of a bump. Okay, so this looks quite all right and maybe move this a bit over here. Okay, so let's do the fourth one, which is the same thing as the third one or the second one, sorry. So you just go from here and then you just start modeling like so. And you try to follow this line, of course it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just continue it like this. And then you do the final one, which will be the same as the first one, so the fifth one is the same as the first one, and you do just a bunch of points like this. And you finish it here. You go finish and you go into 3D. So first we don't really need these lines over here, so I'm just going to select all of them, just hold the control to select multiple and delete them. Then you select all of this and you go create form. And you get something that looks like this and you just go into realistic to make it to see the actual bump in the middle. And you go finish mass. Now we need to add a roof to it, so I'm just going to go here to massing in sight, roof and just add a roof. Okay, so now we need to kind of cut this up to have our site embedded house and it will be actually like some sort of a center or public space with some stores or something. So I want kind of a hallway going through this and I want it to look cool. So I'm going to go here into level one and I'm going to go to architecture component model in place and now we're going to model the void that's going to cut, be cutting our actual shape, our site or topography. So I'm just going to do it as a generic model and just choose void form and void extrusion and now you start basically cutting it up. So I want to open this up as a public space 
then I want to continue this kind of a as a hallway maybe make a bit of a turn over here then make a hallway like this do one like this perhaps yeah kinda like that maybe do one over here yeah this looks cool maybe extend this a bit do another line over here and now just by using the split element tool I'm going to split this so split that and this one here as well and then just by using trim and extend you trim everything in place so you get something that looks like this so you just trim this trim that so we have kind of a small triangle triangular shape over here and we have this pub big public space over here and I'm just going to cap these lines because we need to have kind of a closed loop so you kind of close it however you want you don't have to be too precise and now you go into 3d and you just go finish you extend this void form and you cut this with that and you get this can't make cutout and how do you fix this so you need to select your void form and you need to go into edit extrusion go into level one and now you need to kinda pull this in for some reason it doesn't work if you finish your void outside of the boundary of your site plan I don't know why this is but for some reason it doesn't work Revit isn't really responding to it so what you need to do is you need to kinda make sure that it finishes inside of your boundary and you make it you just make it work and don't worry it will look nice when it's finished and when we add something on the side so let's go like this perhaps and here connect it like this okay I hope I haven't exited the boundary anywhere so you just connect this and you connect this and you just go finish and if we go into 3D you try cutting it now okay I'm guessing I kinda escaped over here so let's just go again into edit type and you have to kinda work around these small Revit bugs but don't worry it's not that big of a hassle so you just go finish here go into 3D you go cut geometry and there you go now it works so I'm just going to go finish model and let's just select this surface over here and let's just hide it in place because I don't want to see it okay so we have this cut out in our site so now we need to add some walls over here and of course we can add a material to this so I'm just going to add grass material so you just search for grass and let's pull this in go apply okay and let's leave the same thickness go OK OK and yeah it, I know it looks quite green and it's not all grass but it works for now okay so once we have this let's just go to wireframe for this one now we need to add some walls in here so you just need to go into site plan and you need to start placing your walls or you can probably do it in can I do it in level 2 yeah or just go into level 1 and make sure that the underlay is at level 2 and if that don't work then look up let's try this yeah it doesn't work okay let's just go into level 2 and you go just WA for wall and you can use the basic wall doesn't really matter just make sure that this wall center line or the location line is finish face exterior and then you start placing your walls but again you don't want your walls to start over here you want to start just a bit on the inside so you just go like this and make sure you don't exit your form and you go from here to here just make sure, just tap the space key if it's on the wrong side you go here and you do this all the way around yeah this I think it's on the wrong side yeah now it's right and again wall you do this here you do this line and let's finish it off over here and now let's just select all of our walls and let's set the heights so I'm just going to go into 3d 
okay okay I can select the walls here and now for the heights of the walls I wanted to start from level 1 and let's leave it at unconstrained okay why doesn't it work level 1 apply okay now we go attach top base we select this and wouldn't you know it it doesn't really work that well it kinda did work for these walls over here in the middle but all the walls that are kinda starting from the edge it doesn't work so again there's a workaround it's a bit longer but you have to do it so you need to go to edit profile and then you use just a spline and you kinda follow the the line of the cut wall like this then you need to adjust this and as you probably already know by using trim and extend it doesn't apply to splines so you need to kinda select this line and pull it down and then you can delete this you go finish and then you just repeat the same process for the rest of it And in the end this is what you get so now you can perhaps select some of these walls and make them curtain walls maybe that would look nice okay this is detached sorry okay I'll leave it at what it is okay but anyway you get the point you can play around with the walls and you can get whatever you want so this is a project with a bunch of workarounds but in the end we've got an amazing looking finished product i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you learned something thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions for future tutorials please leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day